Hello, everyone. I'm Sybil Starr, and I'm here to give the forecast for the Scorpio full moon uh, that happens on April 23rd. Um, but it also contains the forecast for the Jupiter Uranus conjunction. So it's the Scorpio full moon with the Jupiter Uranus conjunction. And the title for this is the healing field of infinite possibility. We are in an incredibly ripe field, a field that is ripe with all possibilities, but it does, it is predicated on some healing that needs to be done. But also first we need to start with the, um, Aries new moon solar eclipse. We need to talk a little bit about that. That happened on April 8th because, you know, the, the full moon is like the culmination or the fulfillment of the new moon, the intentions that were set at this solar eclipse. Although the solar eclipse energy lasts for a good six months or longer, so this is the first full moon, but we're still in a really big window of energy of this of this eclipse. And so at this eclipse, we had like eight plant, uh, what was it? Seven or eight points in Aries. We had a lot of Aries energy. And we had the sun, the moon, and Chiron at the exact conjunction of 19 degrees, 24 minutes. And we also had Mercury, Eris, Venus, and Hygieia and the North Node. So we had many, many points, super amount of Aries energy. And Aries is so much about life force. Uh, it brings with it a huge amount of life force energy to assist with the birth of, uh, and what I feel like the solar eclipse was about the birth of the new human body template and level of consciousness. We are shifting out of the 3D polarized physical experience and returning into a more cosmic celestial body template, which is our true nature. We might call this homo luminous, homo omega. There are many words for the activation of the human luminous body and the activation of our light codes, uh, light codes and angelic frequencies that live in our DNA. This was all about, um, like I said, the to me, Aries is so much about individuation. And so this is the first step for the um, birthing the new earth is first birthing the new human so that we can align with the new earth, which is also coming. And so, as I said, our new form is homo luminous, and it is the activation of our human 12 strand crystalline DNA that exists in the quantum field. We're birthing a new consciousness, a new light within. And this is all part of our original blueprint. Now, some say, um, I've read this and and it really kind of resonates as truth on some level to me that this was a scientific in experiment in Atlantis that went awry, that disconnected humanity from uh, our 12 strand DNA, our higher selves. It is our 12 strand DNA that consciously connects us to our own divinity and our higher self. Without that, we have forgotten who we are. Okay, and we are now ready for the reunion of our human aspect and our divine aspect. And it has been fear that has been shrouding the light codes as we stepped into this matrix of, uh, of, of 3D matrix of fear. Uh, it has been shrouding the light codes in our DNA, and it is time to remove the fear. And so at this time, we are bringing our shadow material and unresolved traumas to be healed by the light. And this is the Chiron piece, the healing, the healing crisis, because there is a Chironic wound of identity. Um, the Chir uh, Chiron in Aries is about a wound in our identity. Aries says, you know, I am who I am and I have a right to be who I am. But Chiron says there is a wound because we have forgotten who we are. And it is, but it is through these wounds that we find the strength and courage to claim our sovereignty as divine beings. And I have heard since this eclipse uh, on April 8th that some people have had spontaneous healings while others are struggling with increased fatigue, not sleeping well, and a myriad of other symptoms. And I'm going to say that's, I fall into the latter. I have certainly um, had some very strange 
physical symptoms this week and really struggling with fatigue and uh, not sleeping well. Um, because what it is, you know, this upgrade, we've had this energetic upgrade to our DNA and it has to be integrated and it is a process. And as it does, it is, it is, it is, uh, coming into contact with the obstacles or traumas, those things that need to be healed within us so that the light can move through them. And it can require a lot of energy to integrate these upgrades. Okay. It is the process of weaving the higher frequencies into our energetic template. Okay. And now it's important to remember too, the evolutionary goal of Aries is courage. So we are guided to be brave and courageous in these times of great change. And Aries is also a warrior. And so Aries brings to light uh, unresolved conflict. What is ever out of alignment in your life? Um, and often is where we need to either stand up for ourselves and others and where we say yes or where we say no. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk just a little bit more about the Aries before I show you the actual chart of the um, uh, uh, full moon. So we also have, or maybe I'm just going to go ahead and show it to you right now, even though we're going to look at a couple of other aspects. So I'm going to show you the chart of the full moon. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, so what we've got going on here is we have the full moon, which occurs on April 23rd, 2024 at 4.50 p.m. Uh, at that specific time here in Santa Rosa, where I'm at. And so we have the moon here at four degrees, 18 minutes of Scorpio. This is the full moon, exactly opposite the sun in Taurus at four degrees, 18 minutes. And there's always an opposition between the sun and the moon at the full moon. And it's the axis of these energies. So we really bring them both in. But some other things that are happening, uh, we still have quite a bit of Aries going on. Uh, we still have Hygieia, the North Node. Mercury is retrograde in Aries, conjunct the North Node. Uh, we also have Chiron here in Aries at, at 20 degrees. It's conjunct Venus and Eris here. Okay, and very tight. Venus is tightly conjunct Eris. Uh, we also have um, Uranus. Uh, and uh, Uranus and Jupiter, they're still conjunct. They're just a few minutes off. They're like uh, half a minute uh, off. Um, Jupiter has moved past, but it's it's still there. Oh, I didn't mention that in the, the full moon is also square Pluto. Pluto is here at two degrees of Aquarius. And so it's it squares the uh, full moon. And then we also have Mars in... Um, Pisces coming up to into a conjunction with Neptune. Okay. Let's see anything else we need to talk about. Of course. Um, yeah, I think that's it. All right. So what does all of this mean? That of course is always the question. So first we're just going to talk since we've been talking about Aries, let's just finish up with Aries before we go into the Tor the Scorpio energy. So Venus is conjunct uh, Eris and actually Chiron as well uh, in Aries. And of course, this can bring conflict and divisiveness into the field. Um, you know, Venus is usually harmonious, but she's also a warrior goddess in Sumerian and Mayan cultures. And as we know, there's a very serious potential for World War III in the Middle East. I mean, there is a lot, there's a lot of conflict and violence going on uh, with neighbors fighting each other, I mean, neighboring countries. Iran is now involved. Um, this, you know, and uh, Venus is showing us our projections and how we need to own our feelings um, so that we can heal the polarity consciousness on the planet and come back into harmonious balance. She is showing us where we are out of harmonious balance so that we can come back in. And she's also showing us that if we are angry, it's so important to own it. And when, because when you own, just say, you know, I'm angry and, or I feel anger. And so if you follow the trail and of what is triggering you, recognizing that this anger lives within you and it got triggered, it doesn't 
not no one else made you angry. It's like someone else triggered your anger. And so instead of blaming someone else for making you angry, to go deep within and see what it is that is triggered so that you can, it's really giving your power away to someone else when you blame them for your anger. When you can own it, you can understand what it is it's trying to tell you, where you may be out of alignment or need to set boundaries. Um, this is part of the healing and the integration of the dark and light within as our shadow material that the universe, like I said, is showing us, um, are showing us our shadow material and unresolved trauma. Okay. Um, because that's the only way to be able to hold and anchor this new light coming in is to have our energy field as clear as possible. Now, we also have Mercury retrograde uh, in Aries, conjunct the North Node. And so Mercury in Aries can be direct and to the point. Uh, Mercury, of course, is the mind and how we communicate. Uh, as Mercury in Aries is direct to the point, which is important now to say what you mean and mean what you say. But Aries, Mercury in Aries can also use words as weapons. Mercury retrograde asks us to pause and think before we speak. It will may save a lot of hurt and anger if we do. Difficult things can be said with kindness. Okay. All right. Now we're going to talk about the actual full moon. So the, uh, as I said, the full moon is the illumination or fulfillment of the intention set of the new moon. And the first thing we see is that the Scorpio full moon is conjunct what is called the Shapley supercluster. Um, this is like a huge black hole and they don't even know how many uh, galaxies or universes are on the other side. But how it appears to be functioning is like a massive engine that is pulling the Milky Way galaxy. Some say that it is an unprecedented influence behind the scenes. It's like some unknown force pulling us in a direction that we can't quite figure out. It And it accentuates the mystery of Scorpio. Some things we just do not know or understand, but must trust our own instincts, our own intuition. So it also... Uh, um, accentuates our the use of our intuition and psychic awareness and Scorpio you know is a, a sign I'm going to say often has a high BS detector has the ability to, to recognize what is true and what is not true and so it asks for deep authenticity of self and will strip away anything that is not who we are in our own true nature Okay, and because that is what the solar eclipse is bringing us to our own true divine nature, helping us remember stripping away what is not us. Now, the Sabian symbol for this um, full moon is a massive, unchanging, rocky shore resists the pounding of the sea. And just for those who don't know what the Sabian symbols are, uh, there was a psychic named Elsie Wheeler, who back in the 1930s had a psychic vision for each degree of the zodiac. And it can often add a, a new level uh, of understanding of whatever it is we're looking at. Anyway, so once again, it is a massive, unchanging, rocky shore Resist the pounding of the sea. And, you know, Scorpio is so much about emotional intensity and feeling. And Scorpio is where we have the emotional storms. Its opposite, Taurus, is about inner peace and serenity. But Scorpio is the storm. And so this can indicate that there are emotional storms that may feel unre unrelenting that are impacting our lives. But our true nature, which is unchanging, is able to stand firm and centered within oneself. I believe that's, to me, that's what this is saying. The Taurus sun asks us to stay centered within ourselves while the emotional storm of Scorpio swirls around like the tree rooted deeply in Mother Earth during a storm. And, the, you know, the storm has has a, a, a function, you know, it clears away everything that is dead. You know, after a storm, the tree often looks quite different. It is transformed. 
And so the moon in Scorpio, as I said, is intensely feeling, transformed by emotion. And it says you have to feel it to heal it. This is a very deeply healing, uh, emotionally healing full moon. And I read this and I thought this was really super good. It was a, a quote and it said, feel the feeling, but don't become the feeling. Witness it, allow it, and then release it. You know, there's been scientific studies that show that we actually feel an emotion for 90 seconds. After that, after we've allowed ourselves to feel it, if there's still suffering, it's the story around it, how we keep going back over something that happened and we continue to open the wound and keep it unhealed. Okay. So this is asking us to let go of the old stories and memories that are attached to any negative emotions like fear, anger, envy, resentment, regret. Actually, to me, these are all really just different faces of fear. And as I showed you, Pluto, who is the ruler of Scorpio, squares this full moon and wrote, Pluto is often like the roto rooter of the emotional body. He digs deep. He goes in there and pulls up all the old stagnant stuff that just needs to go to be brought into our conscious awareness, helping us to get to the core and then release the toxic material so that we can then be free of it. And when we do is when we can find the inner peace of Taurus. But like I said, we must feel it, let it go. And Pluto transforms through forgiveness. It's about radical self-forgiveness and forgiveness of others. And when we do find inner peace and serenity, even in the midst of turbulent emotions and change, Okay, there is much conflict in the external world right now. And remember, the external world is a reflection of our inner world. And the only way to have peace in our world is to be at peace with ourselves. And I feel like that's a lot of what this full moon is about. And another interesting piece, of course, is Pluto is transiting the constellation of Aquila, the eagle, activating the stars Altair and Alshane and several different stars. And the eagle is, uh, goes directly into the storm. The eagle asks us to face our fears and own our feelings, go into the storm to then be able to rise above the storm. The eagle then, after he, he goes through the storm, to be able to fly over the storm. The storm is there, but we're not part of it. Okay, we've, we've gone through it and healed that part of ourself that is attached to that storm. And Pluto says this is how we become self-empowered and aligned with divine will our soul design. All right. Now we're going to talk about the Jupiter Uranus conjunction because it is part of this full moon. It was exact on, it will be exact on uh, um, April 20th at 21 degrees, 41 minutes. Um, and so I want to start since we've just been talking about the Eagle, um, the Sabian symbol for this, for the uh, 22 degrees of Taurus is a white dove flying straight and fearlessly over troubled waters. So it sounds a lot like the eagle, but the dove, of course, is a much different bird. Uh, but the, the, the dove, is the, this is the symbol. And so once again, it's about transcending worries through spiritual awareness. And the white dove is a symbol of peace and the Holy Spirit. I think part of, you know, birds are spiritual messengers. And I think the message is telling us that we have divine protection in these tumultuous times of great change and shifting consciousness. And it is also telling us to rise above the storm, to find that place. When we find that place of inner peace is when we can rise above the storm. But we have to get go through the storm to get to that place. Okay. And as I was talking about the... Uh, the solar eclipse, the new moon solar eclipse being the birth of, of, of the new human and of the new human template. I feel like this is an aspect of the birth of the new earth matrix. At the solar eclipse activation of the new light codes from Mother Earth herself and a reactivation of her original template as well as for each of us. It is about liberation from the 3D matrix of fear and limitation and our beliefs around it. 
but in the process, there's a whole lot of shaking going on, shaking off the old, you know, sometimes when people are in trauma, you know, they say, shake it off, shake it off. There's actually, um, a, uh, a, a process of helping people heal trauma, which includes shaking. Okay. Because shaking really moves the energy and mother earth is shaking. And there's been several, uh, earthquakes lately. And, um, so she can, this can bring, uh, upheaval and earth changes as mother earth herself is, is her, her higher frequency template is activated. And, as we, um, as well, as well as much change in our lives, it's bringing change in our lives as part of the shaking off process as well. And as we align with the new energy of mother earth, it does accelerate the process of the breakdown of the old. Okay. For in the chaos of the breakdown of the old, the new is born. And so there, there could be many unexpected changes in many areas of our life, including the financial areas. You know, Jupiter and Uranus together is very much about opening unexpected doors. Um, but as it does, it's pushing us out of our comfort zone. Uranus and Taurus pushes us out of our comfort zone and Jupiter magnifies it. So in the process, Jupiter opens doors, but also closes doors. So it's part of that opportunity. It's like you can't go through the door in front of you if you're holding the door behind you open, okay, with your foot. You know, you got to let it go. <laughs> let that door close so you can go through the one that is opening, okay? So, and it may be unexpected. And, um, it's you know, it closes doors so new ones can open. Uranus and Taurus says, if I had not made you uncomfortable, you would have never moved. And it's about massive breakthrough in areas of our lives where we have been stuck, you know, as we stop holding on to what no longer serves us. And as the old is collapsing, new ideas, new technology is flowing in. There are many downloads. This is a huge psychic, you know, the, you know, Uranus is the divine mind. And so it's really opening the door for a lot of new information that we just haven't had before to be able to move into this new phase of mother earth. Okay innovative technologies that have been captured by the government or other entities will start to be released. And by, I should say, this is a, this is actually a 12 year process. Okay. This kicks off a 12 year process. Um, and I also feel like it's very much about energy healing modalities, uh, really coming into the field. I have been working with something called uh, a vibe, which is a device I wear around my neck, which, um, uh, activates different frequencies into my energy field. And there's many, many new kinds of energy healing modalities and devices showing up and sound, a huge amount of sound and the Salveggio tones. Um, I've been listening to a lot of that. But I also feel like in Taurus, it's very much about the embodiment of our true divine nature. It's about Mother Earth, and it's also about our bodies. Once again, our luminous body, the activation of our 12-strand DNA. And as we know, the ascension process will be taking place in our bodies as they are upgraded to hold the increased frequencies of light, okay? Okay. And I have been working with an Arcturian uh, hybrid woman. Her name is Vivian Chavez. She's absolutely wonderful. And if you're interested in um, Arcturian teachings, she is really sharing some very powerful ones. And one of the things she says, as, as this, these uh, light codes are coming in, to be able to hold them and anchor them in our bodies, one thing that makes it easier is to drink, of course, lots of water with uh, electrolytes and to also add trace minerals to that water because that really holds the, the new frequencies coming in um to hold and anchor it as there's a new collective consciousness being born and i did want to speak to just a little bit more about the deactivation of our 12 strand dna because it is some of the it, it's related to atlantis and or at least that's the story 
And so a lot of people are actually having a lot of memories of Atlantis and Lemuria coming in to our conscious awareness. And I feel like this is part of the process. Mother Earth is also releasing her old memories as we're releasing um, the old stories and memories in our body and our psyche and consciousness. She is doing the same. A lot of the, um, the old stuff needs to go. And so one thing I became aware of is at the time, when, it, however it happened, whether it was Atlantis, Lemuria, wherever it happened, um, the disconnection from our 12 strand DNA and our conscious connection to creator to source feels to me like the fall from the garden of Eden, that that was the real fall. And so as we reconnect and reunite, part of the process is radical forgiveness of self and others. People are having memories of things that happen. And it's so important to know they are only memories and it is time to let any trauma from associated with our ancient past history uh, to go as mother earth also releases the memories of the ancient past history, because the more we live in our own divine nature is when our reality changes. Our divine nature is love. And when we value all life, we reignite the, the flame. Um, nature and nature, it, it's, it's about mother nature. It's about the consciousness of mother nature and valuing and caring for all of life. Uh, and nature is constantly emitting love. Uh, I had an experience actually on the solar eclipse where I was in the woods and did a little ceremony and became very aware that the trees are actually transmitters. And the ceremony was a really high frequency love ceremony. And the, the trees were then emitting that frequency out into the field. And one of the most important things I think about this Jupiter Uranus conjunction is that it truly is a time of miracles. Um, it's we are in a field of infinite possibility and miracles. So hold a place for them because they are happening every day. The field is ripe with them and synchronicities abound. Follow the synchronicities. Bashar says that what we consider to be miracles are actually reality in the higher frequency dimensions. And that is the shift in consciousness we are experiencing. I had a friend recently say she's just come to expect miracles. And when she does, they happen. Okay. So, uh, but also know that, you know, we all have soul contracts as well. And for certain experiences, and sometimes they are challenging. It's not like in the field of miracles, you will have no challenges because we are still growing. But to know that as whatever is in our highest good is really what will unfold and miracles happen all the time. And to keep our hearts and minds awakened to the infinite possibilities that exist when we let go of fearful limiting beliefs. Okay. And it's also important to gather together to hold peace in our hearts, praying and meditating together, and especially with sound, because sound really carries the vibration. Um, and to know that the magic of Mother Earth is just very, very much alive. And I do want to just bring up one galactic point is this, the Jupiter Uranus is coming up into an, <clears throat> an opposition to a star called Hadar in uh Beta, it's called Beta Centauri. Another name for it is Hadar. And um, it's a little wide, but both Jupiter and Uranus will contact it. And the story of Hadar's uh, system is very similar to the story of Avatar. At least this is the, the story, part of the galactic history, that the beautiful species of beings so interconnected with each other and nature and the great mother is really exists. And it was known that they never lost their connection with the unconditional love of the Divine Mother. Hadarians know that the essence of life and love is 
Hadarians know that love is the essence of life and creation. And there are many Hadarian starseeds here now coming to teach us to open our hearts to love because love heals everything. As we are moving back into the higher frequency dimensions, returning to our more natural state. Vivian says 3D is actually a distortion and that it was never, according to her, uh, it, whatever happened was a distortion and was not meant to happen. I don't know if that's true, but whatever it is, it is time to reunite and reclaim our higher, our higher dimensions and our own true divine nature. Now, one more thing that just really came in as well as this, this uh, Uranus uh, Jupiter conjunction is that it's actually a stargate as well. It is opening us up to higher dimensions, and it is a gateway for our star nation relatives to be able to enter into our field and have more contact with us. Um, and and it, because it is time to remember not only who we are, that we are part of a cosmic collective. And Bashar says that first contact on a large scale will be made by the Pleiadians as we share so much DNA with them and they are deeply connected to Mother Earth. And in May, Jupiter is going to align with the Pleiades and actually, and in 2025, uh, Uranus is going to align with the Pleiades. So um, I feel like that Stargate is activated with this conjunction. All right, one last um, uh, aspect, and that is the Mars-Neptune conjunction. They're both in Pisces. Um, they're going to be exact. Uh, it's going to be exact, let's see, um, probably, I think, around the end of May. Anyway, but, but they are conjunct at the uh, full moon. So Mars is our passion, our desire, our direction in life, and where we take action. Neptune and Pisces is about our connection to spirit, imagination, creativity, attunement to subtle energies and the world of the invisible. So when they come together, it really is about intuitive action, listening to our inner guidance about where and how to take action. It's a spiritual warrior. It's about aligning our will with divine will and our divine will aligns with love. It can bring a sense of feeling lost because the external world is unable to provide the guidance we normally rely on. It's like losing power when the lights are turned off and you have to walk around the room and you stub your toes many times until you kind of energetically can feel your way. And of course, it can also be very delusional because if we listen to our human will, it can take us off course. So it can be tricky. But Mars Neptune says to follow the energy and to trust the process like water, how, how like water flows over obstacles. If it is in alignment with what Bashar once again calls your signature frequency, which is your own true divine blueprint or soul design. So when the energy lines up with your own signature frequency, that is the truth. That is the energy to follow, your own divine blueprint. And Neptune and Mars says, uh, and Mars together says, surrender to the divine. And it's, of course, in this big water sign. I didn't mention that. Scorpio, of course, is a water sign. And this is a, another large amount of water. And it reminded me of that um, Hopi prophecy where they say to jump into the river and let go of the shore and allow the river to take you for it has a destination. So that's what this time is about. It really is about allowing the river to take you and to follow your own inner GPS or what I would call the gravitational pull of spirit for it brings us to love and aligns us with our soul design, which is love. And it is the love within our human hearts that connects us all in the light of humanity and to the source of all creation. We are in a filled field of miracles and infinite possibilities. Be in the present moment, trust the process, and allow what is ever in your highest good to become manifest. 
The doorway of remembrance of who we truly are is opening. And as it does, we are creating a new earth. All right. So wishing you all a wonderful couple of weeks coming up. Um, we have some very powerful energy in the field. Things are really shifting and changing. I feel like the acceleration process has really started. And so wishing you all a wonderful several weeks. And if you like my video, please check like and subscribe. And if you're interested in a reading, uh, please check out my uh, information in the description box below. All right. Namaste. Blessings to all.